What is up, you guys? It's Saturday, and I had so many things rolling around in my brain that I had to do a controversial thoughts video. So let's hang out for a little bit, and I'll tell you what's been on my mind. So this video is not about coronavirus. This video is about saturated fat. And if you've been watching my Instagram stories, you know that I am recording a podcast with my friend Nina Teicholz, who wrote a big fat surprise, the big fat surprise, this book, it's amazing. And in that book, Nina gives the story of saturated fat, how it came to be demonized incorrectly, the shoddy science that led to that, the politics, the corruption, the vegetable oil industry. So that podcast is gonna come out on Tuesday and we're gonna go over all of that. But as we are thinking about saturated fat, I've been diving into some of the thinking uh, of people like Peter from the blog Hyperlipid and my new friend Brad Marshall from Fire in a Bottle and really thinking about how saturated fat, specifically long chain saturated fats, stearic acid and palmitic acid affect our physiology in stark contrast to unsaturated fats, specifically polyunsaturated fats like linoleic acid. So this podcast is going to be, this mini podcast, these are these little controversial thoughts videos I do, it's gonna be a little bit of biochemistry about why saturated fat is the best thing for humans from a biochemical perspective and why polyunsaturated fats are the worst things for us and they make us incredibly insulin resistant systemically. And why I always talk about vegetable oils causing insulin resistance. We're gonna get into some of that today. I'm gonna to get into more of it in, in the podcast with Nina on Tuesday. And I'm gonna do a whole podcast with Brad where we break this down in total detail but here is the crazy takeaway, you guys. Chicken could be causing heart disease. Bacon could be causing heart disease because these foods are fed high corn diets and those diets are going to create in uh, unnaturally high levels of linoleic acid in those tissues. This is again, an exoneration of saturated fats, specifically long chain saturated fats that occur in ruminants and a very careful indictment of what is going on with the processing of our food and why what our food eats is so freaking important. And of course we know vegetable oil, linoleic acid in your diet, you don't wanna eat that from corn oil, peanut oil, soybean oil, that's horrible. But if you are eating chicken that is fed corn, you are getting linoleic acid. If you are eating bacon that is fed corn, you are getting a ton of linoleic acid. And so we'll go through a little bit of that today. Again, this is a really deep, complex topic that I'm not gonna get into fully, but I wanna talk about it. So the first thing that I wanna screen share, and I will talk about this in the podcast with Nina, is a recent article that came out from the Journal of the American College of Cardiology. And it was published in the last week, right? The title is Saturated Fats and Health, a reassessment and proposal for food-based recommendations. This is a journal of the American College of Cardiology, state-of-the-art review published in the last week. What are their conclusions? I'm gonna get into many more details in this article in the podcast with Nina. The recommendations to limit dietary saturated fat intake have persisted despite mounting evidence to the contrary. Most recent meta-analyses of randomized trials and observational studies, so both randomized trials and observational studies found no beneficial effects of reducing saturated fat intake on cardiovascular disease and total mortality, and instead found protective effects against stroke. Although saturated fatty acids increase low-density lipoprotein cholesterol in most individuals, this is not due to increasing levels of small dense LDL particles but rather large LDL, which are much less strongly related to CBD risk. If you've read my book, The Carnivore Code, you can pre-order the second edition, thecarnivorecodebook.com. You'll know there's a whole chapter about LDL and why it doesn't cause heart disease per se and why context is super important and that context is insulin resistance. And in this short video, I'm gonna begin to show you why polyunsaturated fatty acids cause insulin resistance. And that is the context that makes LDL damaging. And saturated fatty acids do the reverse and are the most healthy fats that we can be eating, the most evolutionarily consistent fats we can be eating, 
and yet they've been incorrectly vilified forever and ever, like this article is saying. It's crazy freaking stuff, you guys. So this is an article from Journal American Card American Card College of Cardiology, well, that is really exonerating saturated fats. And it just came out this past week. And yet, as you'll hear in the podcast with Nina, the government is meeting right now to make dietary guidelines and they are still recommending against saturated fat. This is lunacy. This is absolute freaking lunacy. So what are saturated fats? Let's talk about this a little bit. What are fats in general? If you look at types of fats, I wanna show you guys a picture of different fats. These are saturated. Lauric, 12 carbons, meristic, 14 carbons, palmitic, 16 carbons, stearic, 18 carbons. No double bonds between these carbons. These are unsaturated fats over here. Oleic acid, C18, monounsaturated, one double bond. Linoleic acid, this is going to be a very interesting actor in this story. C18, two double bonds. Alpha linolenic acid, this is the one that's in flax seeds that everyone talks about, that if you've read my book, you'll know is not very well converted to EPA and DHA, but this is an omega-3 fatty acid. The omega has to do with how far from the end of the molecule that first double bond is. So you can see linoleic acid is an omega-6 because it is one, two, three, four, five, six carbons to the first double bond. Alpha linoleic acid is an omega-3, one, two, three to the first double bond. There's gamma linoleic acid and some other uh, saturated fatty acids that don't, unsaturated fatty acids that we won't worry about. But you can see saturated fatty acids, no double bonds, unsaturated fatty acids, lots of double bonds in the molecules. This is the difference between these molecules. Why does this matter? This matters because of a process called beta oxidation. This is where things are gonna get a little bit biochemical, all right? So bear with me. When these fats are burned in our body, our body breaks down long chain fats, whether they are saturated or unsaturated, through a process called beta oxidation. And in beta oxidation, there are a lot of things produced, but two of the things produced are molecules called FADH2 and NADH2, which deliver electrons to the electron transport chain. This is important because different fats produce different ratios of FADH2 to NADH2. This is beta oxidation. Again, the details here are not important, but you will see that on steps, between steps, as these fats are broken down, this long chain saturated fatty acid is broken down, FADH2 is produced and NADH2 is produced. And at the end, you end up with acetyl-CoA and a shorter fatty acyl-CoA, which will then go through another cycle of beta oxidation. This acetyl-CoA goes into the Krebs cycle, which I've talked about in the past. Right, why is this important? When you have a, an unsaturated fatty acid, the ratio between FADH2 to NADH2 is different. It's smaller. Saturated fats produce ratios of FADH2 to NADH2 that are bigger. And I'm gonna gloss over a whole bunch of the details here and just tell you that the higher the ratio between FADH2 and NADH2 at the level of the mitochondria, the more insulin resistance that is created. And this is going to get a little complex. What I am telling you is that when your mitochondria break down a saturated fat like palmitate or stearic acid, which are long chain fatty acids, they produce more FADH2 relative to NADH2. And those mitochondria actually get what is called reverse electron transport, which leads to um, production of reactive oxygen species. And that is how the cell signals insulin resistance. Stay with me. Here is the electron transport chain, complex 1Q2, 1Q3, 4. The electrons flow through this. NADH delivers electrons to complex 1. FADH, though it's not shown here, delivers electrons to complex 2. When you deliver electrons to complex 2, you get more electron transport that is reversed, and you tend to get a little bit more of this hyd hydrogen peroxide, superoxide, O2 minus produced, which leads to more insulin resistance at the level of the mitochondria. You're saying, Paul, I thought you said saturated fats were good. Why are you telling us they cause, um, why are you telling us they cause insulin resistance? Because we have to think about which cell we are dealing with. Are we dealing with an adipocyte or are we dealing with a peripheral cell, a muscle cell or a, um, an immune cell or a brain cell or the liver? 
let's focus on the adipocyte because this whole thing starts in the adipocyte. And here is how it works. Adipocyte insulin sensitivity means that if your fat cells are sensitive to insulin, when insulin comes along and binds to your fat cell, it's not just a bag of fat, it's an actual cell. It has mitochondria, nucleus. When insulin comes along and binds to your fat cell, it is going to be able to signal to that fat cell to shut off hormone sensitive lipase, which is the enzyme that is used for lipolysis, which makes fat cells break down. And it is going to turn on lipoprotein lipase, which is the enzyme that pulls fat out of your blood into the fat cells. Insulin sensitivity at the level of your fat cells is something you do not want because that causes the fat cells to grow. You don't want your fat cells to grow. You want your fat cells to be insulin resistant. And the state of insulin resistance at your of your fat cells is what determines the insulin resistance state of the rest of your body, but they go in reverse. Meaning that if your fat cells are very insulin sensitive, which is something that happens when you feed your body linoleic acid, because remember the saturated fatty acids when they are metabolized cause insulin resistance at the level of the mitochondria in fat cells. If you are feeding your body linoleic acid and your fat cells are remaining insulin sensitive, they are growing, you are getting fat. If you are eating saturated fat like stearic acid and palmitic acid, your fat cells become insulin resistant and they don't grow. And this is where things get a little complicated. As your fat cells grow, there is another enzyme in the fat cell called ATGL. And ATGL works in concert with something called perilipin A to release free fatty acids into your blood. And the free fatty acids into your blood are what signal to the rest of the body whether your body should be insulin resistant or insulin sensitive, right? So we have insulin resistance at the fat cell, which is going to signal to the rest of the body. So here's what happens. If you eat linoleic acid and too many polyunsaturated fatty acids, your fat cells are going to remain insulin sensitive. They are going to grow. And as they grow, this ATGL enzyme is going to release more fatty acids into your blood because the fatty acids are, the fat cells are growing and they're leaking free fatty acids in your blood. When free fatty acids are found in the blood perpetually, then the rest of the body gets the signal to be insulin resistant. Okay. So the fat cells remain insulin sensitive because you're feeding it polyunsaturated fatty acids, which we're not supposed to have. The rest of the body becomes insulin resistant. If you feed your fat cells stearate and palmitic acid, which are found in ruminants, red meat, your fat cells become insulin resistant. They don't grow. They don't release free fatty acids in the same way. And the signal to the rest of the body is to remain insulin sensitive. So this is all quite complex. And again, I'm going to dig into it more in the podcast with Nina Teicholz. I'm going to dig into it a lot more in the podcast with Brad Marshall. Again, this is building on work from Peter at Hyperlipid and Brad's work at Fire in a Bottle. Brad is the guy behind the croissant diet. He did a recent podcast with Mark Bell, which is really interesting. He and I had an hour and a half conversation talking about this biochemistry yesterday. Super interesting. But here's the take home, you guys. This is the problem with vegetable oil. If we eat vegetable oil, it gets stored in our fat cells. And as you try to burn that fat, your fat cells remain insulin sensitive. They remain growing. So this is how a low carb diet works. A low carb diet works by lowering your insulin. If you don't have an insulin signal at your fat cell, it won't grow. Even if you're eating linoleic acid, or even if you're eating foods, and I'm gonna wrap into this as I wrap up, like chicken and bacon, which are enriched with linoleic acid because they are fed foods they are not supposed to be eating. They're fed too much corn. If you are eating those foods and you are eating low carb, your fat cells can remain insulin resistant. Because, well, your fat cells will be insulin sensitive, but you will see such a low signal from insulin because you are low carb. This is how low carb diet works. Low carb diets work by lowering insulin. If you don't have a signal at the level of the adipocyte to cause the adipocyte to grow because your insulin is low, then you can see weight loss. So here's insulin binding to an adipocyte. This isn't a perfect diagram, but you can see here that lipolysis is shut down. Lipogenesis is turned on. And what it doesn't show here is hormone is uh, lipoprotein lipase and the importing, uh, the importion, the, the egress, the ingress of uh, fats from chylomicrons into the adipocyte. So basically, if you are on a low carb diet and you are trying to lose weight, dropping your insulin signal shuts off the signal to the fat cells to grow, but it's not really the problem. 
And the problem that a lot of people run into on low carb diets is that when they reintroduce carbohydrates, they gain weight again because they still have the same amount of linoleic acid in their fat cells. And that linoleic acid is telling the fat cells to be insulin sensitive all the time. Well, if you're insulin sensitive and you have a lower level of insulin, you're kind of correcting the problem. But the ideal situation, and as I talked about in my CGM podcast, which you should watch, insulin signaling is something that we want. We don't want, the, we don't want all the cells in our body to see low insulin all the time. Insulin signaling is beneficial to the level of the kidney to conserve electrolytes and many other places. You want your body to be insulin sensitive, but you don't want your adipocyte to be insulin sensitive. So how do you get an insulin resistant adipocyte? You don't feed your body linoleic acid. You eat saturated fatty acids, which are the fatty acids that have been vilified for the last 70 years, thank you Ansel Keys, wrongly, as I will talk about in the podcast with Nina Ty Colts, and as the Journal of the American Cardiology Association is saying, right? But they're not connecting all these mechanisms. You want your fat cells insulin resistant so that the rest of your body can be insulin sensitive. Get it? Now, how do you do that? You get as little linoleic acid in your diet as possible. As I talked about in a previous podcast with Ivor Cummins, traditionally, we probably had two to 3% of our diet, maybe not even that much, from linoleic acid very, very low amounts. How much do we get now? An astronomical amount because of vegetable oils, but also because of this. Even the foods that we think are healthy are full of linoleic acid. Here's the thing, fatty acid content in chicken thigh and breast as affected by dietary polyunsaturated saturation level. At the beginning of this one, I said, the chicken you are eating is not healthy, and this is why. What you find is that if you feed chicken corn, they get way too much polyunsaturated fatty acids. Your chicken is not healthy for you and could be contributing to insulin resistance. I'll show you another one. Same thing with pigs. I'm gonna break some hearts here. Your bacon is not healthy for you if it is fed corn because mono and polyunsaturated fatty acids affect the fatty acid composition of pig's adipose tissue and make it much more full of polyunsaturated fatty acids, specifically linoleic acid, which makes our adipocytes insulin sensitive, which makes the rest of our body insulin resistant. Problem. This is a real problem. Last one here. You guys may have seen this one. Imagine this. In the Polynesian atolls, they eat tons of saturated fat from coconut and they remain very healthy. Vascular disease is uncommon in both populations. No evidence of the high saturated fat intake having a harmful effect in these populations. This is more of a survey study, but what we really want to be doing is eating animals that are eating their natural diet, which is why grass-fed red meat is the best thing you can be eating. Even if it is fed corn, I am not an advocate for eating, feeding corn to ruminants, but ruminants have an enzyme in their body that can convert polyunsaturated fatty acids in corn into saturated fatty acids in the tissues of animals. This is why suet is such a valuable thing because suet is so high in stearic acid. And if you have a lifetime of eating linoleic acid from pork, from chicken that's been fed it, from vegetable oil, from the eggs that you're eating that are fed corn, the way to undo that, in my opinion, is to eat much higher amounts of suet and saturated fat. You must replace the linoleic acid in your fat cells with saturated fat so they can become insulin resistant so they don't grow when they see insulin. This is a lot, you guys. Watch this video twice. If it doesn't make sense, I'm going to talk about it with Nina. I'm going to talk about Brad Marshall. This is such an interesting concept that I wanted to talk about it. Again, I'm going to summarize it. Here's the take home. The food that you are eating is critical. A carnivore diet, an animal-based diet, in my opinion, is absolutely the best diet for humans. It's gonna give us all of the nutrients, what we need. But the food that your food is eating is critical because so much chicken and pork is fed linoleic acid in the form of corn and soy, and that fat in their fat is going to program your fat to grow big. And the way that a lot of people get around this is by doing a low-carb diet but that's not the answer long-term. It's a good short-term answer, but I think it's pretty clear that some insulin signaling is needed from time to time in humans. 
Others may disagree with this. I think it's very clear that insulin signaling is beneficial. You don't want to lower insulin all the time. You can do it cyclically. You don't want to do it all the time. See the CGM podcast. This is why people who do low carb diets get fat when they add carbohydrates back because their adipocytes are still insulin sensitive because they are eating too many polyunsaturated fatty acids. How do you fix it? You eat lots of saturated fatty acids, specifically long chain saturated fatty acids, stearic acid and palmitic acid from grass fed, grass finished meat in your diet. You get all of those linoleic acid containing foods out. You can eat chicken and pork, but that chicken and pork better be not be fed soy and corn. That's hard to find. This is why red meat is so good, right? And you are very careful about those fats. And then slowly your body becomes more insulin resistant at the level of the fat cells. You want your fat cells to be insulin resistant so they don't grow. You want the rest of your body to be insulin sensitive. Let me know if you guys have questions. I'll talk about this a lot more. The take home is don't eat chicken and pork that are fed corn. Don't eat eggs that are fed corn. Definitely don't eat corn oil or peanut oil or soybean oil. This is the mechanism by which vegetable oils cause insulin resistance, the mechanism by which we are being poisoned. And in a more sinister way, it's so ironic that saturated fats, which are so important for your health and my health, are being vilified. Don't be led astray, you guys. Again, I talk about a lot of this in my book, The Carnivore Code, thecarnivorecodebook.com. Check out the podcast with Nina coming on Tuesday. I'm super excited about this concept. I have to get it out there because not all food is created equal. A lot of carnivores are eating chicken and bacon. If you're filling your body with linoleic acid, you're, un you're creating a problem. Don't get stuck in that. And don't feel like you have to be low carb all the time. I think it's important to cycle it. It can help, but it helps by a different mechanism. So hopefully this makes sense, you guys. I had to get it off my chest. I'll talk about it a lot more. Let me know if you have questions. Again, take home. Linoleic acid can hide in chicken and pork. That is making your fat cells insulin sensitive, making you fat, and making the rest of your body insulin resistant. Stay radical. Mm -hmm.